here we go to a new spot and I don't know what it's gonna bring cow fish and cuddling probably so we're gonna pull in here we're gonna drive down below to the foot of the bridge get stuck into it that's what we're gonna do find the right gear Oh, and the snow is stopping too. Nice, just when I get here. Slight breeze. Right, so, I honestly, I don't know. I know there's 20 meters out in front of me and it's a little reef, but that's about it. But I'm gonna start here anyway, because I like to start at bridges. I like bridges, they're good, they're fun. And this one's got a pier. <laughs> yeah. Get that up. Let's go. Right, we're just gonna have an old gander here. Down here is deep, it's 15 to 20. That green boy there marks a little reef, which is five meters below the surface. So, this is it. 35 gram jiggy thing. Getting jiggy. There we go, 35 gram jiggy thing. They are lethal. Don't know what they're called or anything else. Imports. So, brilliant joke. The hooks are sharp, so is the angler. <laughs> so let's go, see what we get. I'm gonna do a short cast onto just in front of the reef, see what happens. Do I get it back, do I not? Who knows? But we'll do everything in increments so I don't get jammed up straight away, hopefully. Set the drag. Didn't too loose. Cause if there's a pollock out there, he'll bust me up straight away. If it's too loose, and you tear me off into the reef, and that's no bueno. So, I want to put this about mm, five meters this side of that green buoy. Oh shit, right on top of it, no. <laughs> oh yeah, there's five meters of water there. So. We're not totally screwed. Just get it in a little bit. We let it sink down. See if we get nailed or not. The tide is rising. So is the sun. Why haven't I been nailed yet? There's something wrong with Norway. Norway's broken. Oh, oh. Yeah, free. We'll try off over here. Ha oh, ha, look at that down there. Beautiful. Who knows what lives in here? So I'm gonna cast it down this way. The water's heading out of the fjord for some reason. For some bizarre reason, even though the tide's coming in, I think. Well, it should be coming in. According to the tide schedule. But uh, for some reason, the water seems to be heading that way. On this side, anyway. It's crazy with the fjords. There's just a current and it's running this way. So we're gonna put the gear, the lure down this way, and hopefully we'll pick up a fish. Sploosh. We're gonna let that trap back until it finds a snag or a fish. I get some great fish here doing this. I also lose a lot of gear. <laughs> Don't think this lure is heavy enough, to be honest with you. So we'll find something else. I got something, I think it's just a small cowley, but it's a fish and it came the way I thought it might. What have we got? A little cuddling. <laughs> Hope's a little bit large from there. A little cuddy. Maybe get some sploosh action. Hi, Mr. Cody. <laughs> Excellent. We'll try up here. I feel it's better up here. Although I did get a fish there. I mean, if I was a fish in these waters and he was caught in mid water, I would not be doing that. I'd be hiding under some cap someplace if I was his size. Knowing what I know about the place. Sploosh. I'm gonna let that sink down. 
and then start to retrieve. So I'm into something. It's right down the bottom, right down the bottom. So it's a cod or a codling. Feels like it's a codling. It's not that big. But he hit it quite hard. Here we go. Oh my god. We got it. We got it. Oh, he's a beautiful one. Nice little red cut. And they scrap more than usual, these fellas. He's got lots of life in him, lots of spirit. Back you go. <laughs> Split second, he was gone. I could just feel in his body, he was just like full of vigor. Great fish. So, see if there's a big one down there. Right down the bottom there. And it takes quite a while in 20 meters of water, 30 meters of water, for a 35 gram jig to hit the bottom. It takes quite a while, like maybe 30, 40 seconds or something like that. So you got all the time in the world. Oh, that's well down. I'm straight into a rock. <laughs> but it smells slightly seaweed. So. Ah! That's a rock. Ah, boom. Retie. So we retie this and we get back to work. So I've changed over to this 60 gram jig. Hopefully we get a little bit more luck with it. We go down a little bit faster. We will go down a little bit faster. Maybe we cast a little bit further. We we'll see how we go. It's called a Nordic herring. That's what it's called. It's a slow jig that a company called Kinetic has bought and stuck a treble on the back of it. They buy them from China in bulk and then they just the bodies and then they put the stuff on them. But it is a slow jig masquerading as a spinner. It'll work the same way though. But it is a slow jig and a really nice one too. I've never known this not to work, except when there's no fish around. It always provokes a bite, if they're there. Yep, we're in. <laughs> Works every time. This is a bit better, better fish than the last time anyway. It's a cod. It might be actually okay. It's silver. But the, the cod are actually quite shiny when they're in the water. Kind of weird. So it's their white bellies. <laughs> it's only a little lad. Got a lot of soul. Got a lot of soul. Come here mate. Yeah, he's pooed a starfish. <laughs> there you go. This is a wee cutty. Woo! Lush. I'm gonna lob it out, let it shoot down, see what happens. Once you track it, but sometimes, you know, it's kind of weird though. Sometimes when you find a the fish, there's only one way in. And if you try to go in in a shortcut, you knock it yourself. Let's see if it's one of these times. I've been down this road quite a few times, <laughs> but still, I haven't learned my lesson. So, we're right in the zone now. So, there are ridiculous fish around the end of these pairs sometimes. Right. If you fish the Norway any amount of times, you know how crazy this place is. 
I mean, prices that produce fish, you just, you wouldn't believe it, man. There we go. Oh. The lure's too big for him, I think. Oh, yeah, a lot of small fish. And rocks. Ah, bugger. Oh, we're loose. We'll go over here. See if we can find something different. Yeah, we'll pick that up on the way back as well. See, everywhere. Bum holes. It's not like it's heavy or anything, is it? What's going on here? Ooh, you wouldn't want to fall onto them anyway. <laughs> a bit spiky. You stand up here. If we go down there, I won't have any room to cast. Oh, we will there though. Mm. Ah, we stay up here. Gives me a better elevation to work the jig anyway. Boom. Found a good current anyway. Yep. Oh, bloody hell. It's weed, I think. <laughs> oh yeah, the drag's locked up on this thing. Just in case it is a fish. It's not though. Oh, it must be a rather lot of weed, man. It's the leader, anyway. <laughs> the kelp monster. He's a beast. And a sea urchin. Where you going now? Get off there. I don't want any sea urchins. See, the problem is, if I bring up the sea urchin and he's down there and the seaweed comes off, I'll have to climb down and get him because I feel sorry for him. <laughs> so get off. There you go. There you go. Didn't have to climb down and feel sorry for him. Stupid bloody sea urchins. Try one out over here. Sploosh. And the wind is starting to pick up. At least I got to fish it for a little bit anyway. I'm gonna go back up to the pier. Cause there's nothing here. So I forgot to go and get the mono that the pigs threw on the ground. But we get it now. Then we'll be on to another spot. Cause this one is a little bit thirsty for the jigs. There's not that many fish. If there was big fish here, I'd rather have all my jigs, to be honest with you, but it's not really producing. The amount of seagulls and crap I find caught up in this stuff, dead, still alive, everything else. Give it up, give it up. Everybody watches YouTube fishing. If you fish and you watch, you watch YouTube fishing, you see people picking this crap up all the time, stop throwing it around. Don't be a bum hole. All right. And so off we go. I don't know what it is with people. I just leave them rubbish and the worst of all fishing line and crap around the place. So we're going to wreck you a new pier today. That's what we're going to do. Just down this way. Trying to get out of this rain. Keep fishing. It is lashing. The wind is blowing. Yeah. No bueno. Let's have a look down here. Keep away from the rain. Can we go and get in there? Just can. We go to the end though. That's the big big question. A rabbit. Really? Oh, you got a big boat too. Cheers. So, we are here <laughs> because of the windage. It's driven me behind these buildings over here. So, it's blowing <laughs> wind and stuff. Yeah. So, that's why we're fishing here. The water's quite decent. It's from 35 all the way up to 80 and stuff. The gear is, as usual, heavy and stupid heavy for what I'm doing. We've got 5,000 size reel. We got 
50 to 120 gram rod. We got 50 pound main line, 20 pound bottom shot, 100 pound leader, 164 pound rubbing leader, and 100 gram lure. Boom. So the next rod, 8,000 size reel, 60 to 200 gram rod, 40 pound main line, 100 pound braid leader, 164 pound mono leader, and boom, boom, 150 gram jig. Nice. And we're going to be fishing for things with fins, living water, great jokes. Some people know them as fish. <laughs> so let's go. 100 gram jig. Is it first cast fish? This is the only thing I want to know. Is it first cast fish? Let's find out. Whoa. And caught. Yeah, it's a really good, <laughs> really good current here. It's raining now. But it's falling pretty straight, so I'm okay with just the jacket for now. So, right. Coley, that's what we need. Coley, or big double figure cod would also be pretty bloody brilliant. Boom. It's not high water yet. What's going on? It's a roundabout now. I would expect something to go on. But nothing's going on. You can't go wrong, really. There's always something. Right, this jig is bloody useless. Not a fish. Time to get Mr. Sandale out. So, bored with the blue lad. It's not producing, it's not staying down. Quite a strong current here. So, we're going to change over to the 150 gram. Yeah. My boy produced most of the fish for me. This guy, <laughs> I like him. He's a bit banged up, bruised up, but he does the job and he casts pretty well. Yeah. I have altered the hook on this, just as a matter of interest. I have made it square, head on. I'll explain the thinking behind it. In the Middle Ages, right, they used to have these um, arrowheads the first armoured piercing technology. They were called bodkins, right? And to pierce the armour, they had a, like instead of being round, the point is square, four, four sides to it, right? And in my mind, just like a bodkin, that will go into a halibut's mouth easier than a round one. What I've learned about halibut is they got tough mouths, right? And um, yeah, and sometimes I've missed takes and all due to the fact of the toughness i reckon and that's a 12 hour hook on there as well just as a matter of interest so we'll see how we get on here see this lad fishes i know how he casts anyway boom <laughs> nice down down he goes what he catches nobody knows and it helps to have a, a big reel when you're doing this to keep these otherwise you'd be winding like crazy with a small reel and you won't be able to keep the jig up off the bottom and you'd be knackered so a big reel is what you need when you're fishing deep water and big lures if you want to fish like this i mean if you want to jerk them up and down and keep them up high in the water sure you can do that with a smaller reel but you can't work precise to the floor with a small reel like you can these setups here of course you couldn't fish that jig very well on the other one you'd manage it but not very well so out we go try over here boom boom so what i've noticed, noticed with the boats is they like green things Green and green, green with silver. Wild about it. For a while, I thought it was orange because I was getting them on orange jig heads, but it's not. Because then I tried with an orange lure, and I just got follows off them, and uh, they weren't having any of it because uh, it's the body that interests them for some reason, apart from the tail. But the color, they seem to have this thing about the color for sure. They really do. Oh, 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 oh. 
you couldn't see it, but I saw something. Looked like a big cowfish. Nah, we'll try one more time. Maybe he went farther down. <laughs> Stupid joke. Nice cowfish would be great. Kevin! Yeah. No, no. Watch where you're flying, Toby. <laughs> Sooner or later, I'm gonna get a mid-air collision with this <laughs> jig and the seagull. I can feel it. And it's not gonna end well for the seagull, unfortunately. He gets hit by that, yeah, we'll take him out of it for sure. Get some. Boom. Oh. Sleeping, missed the bite, blabbing to ye lot. He's just cost me a fish. Thanks a bunch. He's aren't coming anymore. That's it. Oh no, it's just seaweed. <laughs> it's a big lump of weed. What is this? Is it a fish? I don't think so. It's just a huge lump of weed, kelp or something. Yeah, you don't need to see this. Catch of the day, look at that yolk. It's it's a sea cucumber. That's what it is, it's a sea cucumber. Uh, <clears throat> cold water cucumber. <laughs> I don't know if it's designated as that, but for sure it's the same family as a sea cucumber. Yep. And the way they eat, they're, they're, they're like starfish. The same family as starfish and, and stuff like that. And they eat the same way. Also, corals as well are also in this kind of family as well, I think. And they put their guts out all over the place and then they eat like that. It's, they have this stringy stuff anyway. Nasty. No, they're not nasty. They're pretty cool, actually. Some places they actually eat these type of things. Boom. Goodbye, cucumber. <laughs> Goodbye, cucumber. Goodbye, sea cucumber. Right. Enough sea cucumbers. Got me all excited, he did. Bloody cucumber. Boom. Oh yeah, we're in. Wah. Oh, I wonder what it is. Gotta be a card. Stop fighting now, anyway. Definitely a card. Billy always gets it wrong. Of course they do. Let's see what it is. It's winding them slowly there. What we got? What we got? Is it a pollock? What is it? It's a ling. <laughs> it's a ling on a jig. On a jig. I've got, oh my god, from the shore! Billy always gets it wrong. <laughs> nice. Nice. Boom. So, pretty decent link from the shore. Boom. You're coming with me, Mr. Ling. There you go. Jig still survives. Boom, nice. Right. So, first time for Everton. That was my first ever laying on the jig. Full stop, short boat, otherwise it doesn't matter. First time ever. Fantastic. So, first. So there is fish here. Enthused, enthused. Let's go. Boom. 
thing on the jig. Nice. Of course, they catch them off wrecks and everything else all the time on jigs. So, why the hell not? One more time with the feeling, Billy. Okay. Boom. So, we're done here. De mucho frío. So just before we head off, we'll weigh the old ink tank. Zero. Tank. Hey, excuse me. Almost three. Nah, almost three pounds anyway. Not too bad, not too bad. So I'm Billy. This is Billy catching lings from the shore. Remember, I'll see you on the beach. Bye.